Hey guys, today we're going to talk about simple linear regression. What is it? How does it work? Starting from all the basics until finding the best fit line. So why do we need regression models? Well, there are two main objectives regression model fulfills. First is to recognize if there exists a statistically significant relationship between two variables. That simply means does variable x have an effect on variable y? Just like does income affect spending. The second objective is forecasting ahead of time. Do you know humans also follow linear regression? Suppose a man wants to cross a road. He will calculate his position, the car's position, and estimate where it be in 5 seconds. The formula for regression line is y is equal to mx plus b, where y is the dependent variable that we want to predict, and x is the independent variable that we use to predict other variables. In maths, we use the regression equation y is equal to mx plus b more often, whereas in machine learning and statistics, we use y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1x, where beta 0 is the intercept and beta 1 is the slope. Here is a quick example. Now let's go in depth to understand the basics of linear equation. What is slope? What is intercept? What do changing slope and changing intercept imply? Intercept is simply the value of y when x equal to 0. That intercept indicates that someone with zero experience will get at least 40k salary because the starting point is 40. However, yellow regression line indicates that someone with zero experience will get zero salary because the starting point is zero. Now, we will understand what a slope is with the help of an illustration. Firstly, pick two random points, plug the values in, now we will find the change in y, that is y2 minus y1, then find change in x, that is x2 minus x1, change in y is 20 and change in x is 5. It indicates that for every 5 years of experience, salary increases by 20k. Keeping this slope in mind, we will run the illustration on a steeper slope. Now pick the same two points, plug the values in, and find the change in y, that is y2 minus y1. Then find change in x, that is x2 minus x1. Change in y is 40 and change in x is 5 this time, meaning for every 5 years of experience, salary increases by 40k. Now that you know the basics of linear regression, you want to how linear regression works with the help of an example. Here is a sample data set where x-axis is the work experience and y-axis is the salary. Here is how regression equation for our example will look like. Salary equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 multiplied by years of experience. Now let's understand how linear regression works step by step. Our main aim here would be to find the best fit line for our data. For simplicity sake, let's take a small of three data points. Here the x-axis is the years of experience and the y-axis is the estimated salary for three different individuals. Here is our linear equation for the data set. Estimated salary is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 multiplied by years of experience, where beta 0 is the intercept and beta 1 is the slope. Now we will plot the points onto the graph. Let's continue our search of finding the best fit line. Following are the steps we will use to find the best fit line. We will go through each step one by one. Step 1. Pass a line through the data. Let's just simply pass a line through the origin. Step 2. Calculate slope and intercept values. Change in x is 1 and change in y is 15. For 1 unit change in x, there is 15 units change in y. So our slope becomes 15. Step 3. Predicting points using slope and intercept values. Plugging slope equal to 15 and intercept equal to 0 into the equation to obtain predicted values for each observation. 
Step 4. Find the residuals, that is actual minus predicted values. Plot the predicted points and measure distances using residuals. This is our actual point and this is our predicted point. And the difference between them is known as residuals. Now let's compute sum of squared residuals by calculating their derivatives. Now that we know what residuals are, let's square each residual and sum them together to get our sum of squared residuals, also known as sum of squared error as shown in this equation. Now let's go ahead and apply this equation onto our data and we get this. Firstly, let's calculate the derivative for each residual. Consider derivative of this part. The square will jump in front. Now the derivative of the rest of the equation is minus 1. Similarly, we'll take the derivative for rest of the equation. Finally, plotting our sum of squared residuals onto gradient descent. Negative 44, where x-axis is the intercept and y-axis represents the sum of square residuals. Now calculating our step size. Carrying sum of squared residual of negative 44 onto here. Then calculating the step size, taking 0.1 as a learning rate. Then we calculate the new intercept by subtracting the old intercept that is 0 from the step size that is negative 4.4. And the result comes out to be 4.4 as a new intercept, which is higher than the previous one, which we will again use for new predictions. Again, applying the derivative on the residuals, we get our new sum of squared residual, that is negative 13.4, which is lower than the previous one, and an intercept value of 4.4, which is higher than the previous one. Now let's quickly understand what happened. We pass a line through our data with intercept equal to 0. We calculate the residual for each observation, square it and sum it all up to arrive at sum of squared residuals. And the result comes out to be this point, that is 44. So then we use these two equations to get our new intercept. So initially when we are at this point, we need to decide two things. First is the speed we want to go. Second is the direction we want to go. Firstly with speed we want to know if we can take a big step like this or, or some baby steps like this. Secondly, we need to decide which direction we want to go, whether it's this way, this way, or this way. This equation determines the speed at which we want to go. And this equation determines the direction we want to go. Now let's talk about learning rate. Selecting an optimum value for learning rate is essential. Either we can take small steps like this, but the convergence will take forever. Or we can take huge steps like this, but we might end up going beyond our point of convergence. Therefore our learning rate must be adaptive. That is larger steps when we are far from our point of convergence and smaller steps when we are near our point of conversion. This equation determines the direction. Therefore, at this point, we take the derivative of the slope to determine if it's a positive or negative slope. In this case, it's a negative slope because the right hand side is pointing downwards. So old intercept minus some negative value will give a positive value for a new intercept. 
So in this case, our sum of squared residual is negative 44. Our learning rate is 0 0.1, which gives us negative 4.4 as, as our step size. When we plug in the step size, we get 4.4 as our new intercept. Then we pass a new line through our data that has intercept equal to 4.4. And its sum of squared residual works out to be 13.4. Then we take derivative of slope for that point. Again, the slope indicates a downward movement. You can see the step size from 44 to 13.4 is huge. We take the derivative of slope at this point and it comes out very close to zero. Then when we find out the sum of squared residual of when intercept is 8, we get sum of squared residual higher than the previous one. So we take derivative of the slope and it turns out to be positive because the right hand side is facing upwards. Therefore we will go downwards. Finally, this point will become our global minima that has minimum sum of squared residuals and the corresponding line with the intercept equal to 5.7 will become our best fit line. Hooray! We have found the best fit line. Let's do a quick recap now. Today we learned the basics of linear regression like linear equation, what is an intercept, what does change in intercept indicate, what is a slope, what does change in slope indicate. We have taken a simple linear regression example of years of experience with salary. We have understood the step-by-step -step process of how linear regression works. Finally, we have plotted the sum of squared residuals on a gradient descent.